Four and a half years after their breakup, Adam and Camille go over their whole relationship, starting with when they first met on a trip to Hawaii, going through road trips and their memorable wedding in Las Vegas, baby. Yeah, think big, coming down, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to uh, my podcast, Adam. Thank you. How are you? Uh, surviving, you know. It's, That's always the answer. it's always the answer you're giving even when it was like 2018 you're like i'm surviving i'm like are you gonna survive actually yeah you know <laughs> survive it's like it's like the baseline if you can survive then then you're fine well that's basically what we're all humans doing yeah especially last year yeah covid had almost no impact on my life The, the the biggest impact COVID had was I had to wear a mask to the store. And so it was annoying. Right. But like it, that's like it. I don't go out and do anything and I'm fine just surviving in front of the computer. So like. Yeah, I know you're like playing video games 24 seven. So <laughs> all of us introverts are like, I've been practicing my whole life for this. <laughs> exactly. Actually at first, um, Uh, COVID hit when the strawberries, the Yupik strawberries were starting at the farm. Mm. And because that was outside and people could like distance and people didn't really know about how to handle COVID quite yet. And also because the U.S. is really dumb about how they handle COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of... <laughs> Let's agree about that. Yeah, I don't think anybody will disagree with you, except for <laughs> the people who stormed the White House. But that's a different story. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, that was, that was insane. But anyway, um, people were bringing, like, they bring their kids out because they could bring them outside and do something with the kids to get them out of the house. Yeah. So they actually did really well for the Yupik strawberries this, this year. Nice. Um, I, I pretty much wanted to go over our whole story, mm -hmm. like from the start. <laughs> from Hawaii on? Yeah. So basically, if you can just tell me kind of what you remember of it and like, I don't know, like everybody oh, hears me talk about it all the time, but that's only my side of the story. So wait, they hear you talk about us all the time. Yeah, of course. I'm always like, oh, my ex-husband, no, no, no. And people are like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, I got divorced. I was 24. And they're like, what, what? <laughs> Yeah, well, jumping ahead, I remember being in the courthouse and your mom called. You're like, oh, yeah, we're at the court signing the divorce papers. And she's like, what? <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, you, we, well, that'll come later. Okay, so uh, let's start with the um, start. Yeah, so <laughs> we all went to Hawaii. And uh, let's see, we... We had to rent, I think we ended up renting two cars, but we only had one that first night. Uh, yes. And so I went, I picked, oh yeah, we only had, could have one because I was the only one driving. So I had to get you guys and take you to the house so we can then we go get a rental car the next day. Yeah, because we missed our flight the day before. Oh, and right, we that's left right. New York because, because we had an, a car accident. Yeah. yeah, he <laughs> decided to drive his car into the center of the, the, the median highway. No storm. And uh, so, yeah, we slept in New York and we arrived like way later and you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you were there with the car and we couldn't rent the other one because it was too late. Mm -hmm, so yeah. We were yeah, like nine didn't... people in a five place car. Yeah, it was a Kia, oh, what was it like a Kia Sorento or something? Oh, yeah, something a like Kia that. Optima, some some. Yeah. Some kind of really small car. It was a four-door Kia, but a small four-door. Nine people or ten people? I don't uh, know. Let's, okay, well, let's see. PA was driving. I was in the front seat. I was on I your lap. just met you, and you were sitting on my lap. <laughs> uh, we had four people yeah. on the bench in the back, so that makes seven. And Well, more than that. Uh, there was Gab. Somebody was laying on top. Hand. There were five in the back. Yeah, because somebody was laying on top of all four of them. Yeah, so. So it was, yeah, you, me, PA, Gab, Verge, Roxanne, 
Yeah. Karin? Karin and uh, Jeremy. Oh my. I don't know, Jeremy met us later. Yeah, right? but still a lot of people in a small car. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, was the first time we met. Yep. And then... And, um, I, I mean, I was at the, at the airport. I was like, oh, hey, I kind of like her. And you had to sit <laughs> it on my lap and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to sit here and pretend like I'm cool with this, but I'm like really excited. So... <laughs> This is the like the baseline of our story, basically. Because <laughs> after that, I mean, we spent what two weeks there? Ten days. Well, nine days because you spent nine your first days. day in New York. Right. So that was quite short. It was very full, though. And we were like always getting drunk at night and like hiking in a day. Yeah, we do at least two big things every day. Yeah, that was crazy. Except for I think one night we got really drunk and so we didn't do anything the next morning. That sounds about right. And oh, there was a night where um, we like, like, snook, snook, sneak in? How snuck, do you snuck? snuck. <laughs> I'm like, snuck. how do you sneak it in the past? We, we snuck in the, the pool. It was in the hot tubs. Yeah, we, we got that condo at yeah. that, um, like, gated. No, it wasn't gated. It, it was, was. Gated. it was It was just never closed. Yeah. But yeah, it was that gated rich people community up in rich people, Princetonville. Oh my God. Surrounded by rich and people. There's probably some movie stars there. Probably. Seriously. We were like, was it the poorest people? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and they all knew it. Oh yeah. And we, but was we, it that trip that we saw that famous surfer that got her arm eaten by a shark? Uh, I don't think so. Was that uh, one of the trips we were up at Princeville, I guess, not your trip. And yeah, there's a famous surfer who got her arm bit off by a shark and kept surfing. Shit. And we saw her like uh, having her dog was pulling her around on her skateboard. Oh, my God. OK. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't, but yes, yeah, we stuck into the um, the hot tub because that wasn't included in our uh, condo rental. Well, it was. So, but it was oh, no, it was. It was. It was cool. Yeah, they had, they had quiet hours. Yeah. So we just, we literally climbed we the brick wall. We <laughs> yeah. put the, passed the wine through the gates of the, the bars of the gate. Yeah. Oh, my God. And um, they ended up coming and yelling at us. Yep, of course. What were we expecting? Yeah. The poorest people there. Like, <laughs> Sneaking we tried, in. We tried to be quiet, but we were already drunk. Well, I think we thought we were quiet, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but when you're drunk, you you're you're, yeah. you're not able to be quiet. Yeah. And uh, so, when did anything happen in that trip? But Be between you and I. Um. I don't remember how far through, but we, I know we went on that big hike in Waimea Canyon. Yeah. Miniature Hawaiian Grand Canyon. Yeah. And um, by the end of the hike, I was hanging back and we were just like talking the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. But my English was quite bad then, at that time. <laughs> I was, it was good enough, or at least you faked it enough. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm, 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 but I had no idea what you're saying. <laughs> we were talking. I mean, I was saying things. You were answering and asking yeah. things. And okay. So, like, we, I, I feel like we had a, a, a full-on conversation, but okay. I guess I don't know how much of it you actually understood, enough to make it sound <laughs> like you did. Yeah, probably, because I remember, like, not understanding everything you would say to me, and I kind of... I, I kind of tell everyone that you're the reason why I can speak English now. <laughs> <laughs> I basically tell people I learn English at 21. Uh, you knew English. Not that much. I mean, wow. very basic English. It was a good starting spot. Yeah, but... Okay, th so... So, I remember... Oh, my gosh... I also remember we went on a hike, but you twisted your knee or something. Yeah. And so we, I had the, an ACE bandage. 
and we wrapped your knee up in an ace bandage and then limped along yeah. behind everyone else. That was the was when we, one. Yeah, it was uh, Secret Falls we went to where you yeah. kayak up the river and then you hike into the waterfall. Yeah. And like everybody had gone to the waterfall and then turned around and come back and we were still hobbling our way up to the waterfall. We were kind of starting to flirt already, I think. Because I remember yeah. we took a picture in the waterfall and you were kind of like holding my hips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were already uh we were already at the holding stage. Holding, yeah. But we did not kiss yet, I think. No, that was We were like teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and um, the yeah, first time we... we kissed was in like a party, I think, at the condo. Yeah, it was it was at the condo on the couch while everybody was passed out drunk around us. Yeah. Um, I think Verge and David were off making out on the balcony or something. In the laundry room, I think. Ah, uh, romantic. Yeah, the best place to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we were like playing s some game or I don't know. What I don't you mean. Oh, you and I? Yeah. Just that night? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. I think after everybody went to bed, we just kind of kept played together and we kissed and kept talking. And then you wanted to go further and I was like, no, I don't want to. And, you know, classic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we were leaving the next day. We were leaving yeah. the next day. And then when I got home, I think I like added you on Facebook and we started ta talking on Messenger and... Mm -hmm. We just talked every day after. Yeah, like like a lot. Like a lot. And and then and that I, was just chatting, like text yeah. too, which Oh uh, we no, we started video chatting after a while. After a while, yeah, but we were I, still spending like hours just yeah, just text Facebook message te yeah. texting back and forth, yeah. Yeah, because I remember I thought it was well, you wanted to video chat, but I was like too shy of speaking English, so I'd, I'd, I would oh, prefer yeah. to type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Because I had more time to, to think about what I was saying when I, I was writing. Mm. I was not comfortable enough to, to speak. I was like, hey, it's going to go too fast. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I mean, hell, you can already spell French, so English is a breeze. Yeah, well, that's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> And then I went to Europe for a month and a half and I took a flight to California three days after I was back. Yeah, see, I remembered, like, we talked for a couple of weeks and then you came over, but I guess it was a couple of months. It was a couple of months, yeah. Yeah, my sense of time is all messed up. And but then... we were talking about, um, I had always wanted, so my grandpa gave me his old, um, just, nah, was it 1960? One Honda CB450 motorcycle? 73. 70? Seven, uh, if I remember, I think it's 73. Uh, no, 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 70. No, I think it was a 71, right? Couldn't have, yeah, 71. Okay. Because I had my truck was a 79. Anyway, early 70s model motorcycle, which is not very big. It was the biggest you, you'd get back then, like the biggest and most powerful. But these days, it's like, a little baby's toy motorcycle. Yeah, it was like half my ass. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, so he gave it to me. <laughs> Quite a good size. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. So yeah. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, he gave he gave it to me. Uh, it didn't work, but I was I had always wanted to fix it up and take it on a long road trip, and I had. I always thought about fixing it up and taking it up to Quebec to visit PA. And then I mentioned that to you and you're like, oh yeah, I'll come to California and drive 3,000 miles <laughs> with you, person who I knew in Hawaii for nine days. Yep, that sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, all right, spirit of adventure, I like it. Yeah. And so then I had to fix the motorcycle so it could work. Yeah. And um, well, when I arrived, yeah. I, I got there like in the middle of the night. And what I remember is mm -hmm. you picked me up with your mom's car and it was smelling like melon so much in that car. Yeah. And I was like, she used, mm. 
She used it for farmer's markets, so it always had a strong melon odor. It was smelling so good. And you came with Alice. Did I? Yeah. No, with Joe. I brought Joe? You brought Joe. That's a dog. I don't way. remember bringing Joe. Oh, yes, Joe. Joe is a dog. Yeah, you brought Joe. Big, huge, sweet golden retriever. Because he was my favorite before Alice became my favorite. Yeah, because we were video chatting. The dogs would come in and say hi, and then yeah, but Alice is also them. a dog, by the way. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and so yeah, and then we couldn't sleep in the same room. Right, we were. Uh, so I guess we were dating. Yeah, sort of dating then. I mean, I mean we, had, like, we we had sex the first night I got there. <laughs> yeah. That was... <laughs> so I guess we were dating? <laughs> well, after that. <laughs> but we didn't. Your parents might hear this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. No. Mom, Dad, we sat in the trailer and held hands. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Yeah, we waited years because we were not married at first, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why we got married. <laughs> not exactly. But anyway... Um, but yeah, I, I remember picking you up and then uh, grabbing your hand. You were like super nervous when I picked you up and you yeah. were just kind of sitting there all like, like, I don't know, like a ball of nerves. Really? And so I grabbed your hand. Yeah. I mean, maybe not like a ball of nerves, but you were definitely like super shy and like quiet and like, I, I don't think you yeah. would really look over at me. And oh so, I mean, we, had, we like, we hadn't even gotten out, out of the airport yet and so I, re I grabbed your hand and then you loosened up like immediately oh you're like oh okay it's okay it's so cute but I mean you were like I I repeat that it was the middle of the night it was, it was a like place literally I'd midnight never I been think. to with a man I barely knew in a car that smelled melon and we were in the middle of fucking nowhere going to a farm in the dark and i'm like what the hell am i doing here i'm i'm 21 years old like what the fuck like it was kind of insane yeah i mean knowing me i don't think it was insane at all but but i did was, not know that you. was quite yeah it was quite a, a circumstance <laughs> i mean to put yourself in. yeah but it was good i mean it was worth it after all i absolutely think so too <laughs> and then so yeah, so I spent like three weeks on the farm with you, and then we took your motorcycle and drove for, oh my God, Two weeks. so long. Yeah, so I was still fixing the motorcycle when you got there, Yeah, if you remember. Yeah, I do. That's why and it like, took so long, because I wasn't supposed to stay for three weeks there at first. Yeah, I was... yeah we were supposed to take longer on the trip, but I kept having problems and problems. Yeah, but I mean... Which, you just... know, that's, that always is a good sign for a motorcycle before you're going to drive it 3,000 miles across the country mm -hmm. and across I mean, international borders. We have to say that the motorcycle made it to Sherbrooke, Quebec, and died in front of my apartment there. It, it, it actually died a little before your apartment. Well, I mean, like two meters just... away. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it, we coasted, like, we coasted. it was like that block, but yeah, it died, and we coasted and stopped in front of the apartment, and then the motorcycle was like, that's it, no more. That's insane when I think about it. Yeah. Like, uh, we just uh, drove 3,000 miles, and it died right in front of my apartment. What are the odds? And I mean, we drove 3,000 miles with almost no problems. I mean, I brought tools to fix it along the way, but like... Um, if you remember in Oregon, we had a bolt fall off of the shocks or yeah. a nut fall off the shocks. Yeah. And so that was pretty uh, important to get fixed. We had a and problem with the chain at one point. I think. Yeah, that was, I think in like Idaho or something. Yeah, somewhere in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, the chain fell off at a stoplight. <laughs> so yeah. oh, we I needed had to push to it over to a parking lot. And, we needed to buy. Uh, well, drink. yeah, I needed a new one. And the problem is, we had a very strict timeline. You had something you had to be back in Sherbrooke for. Uh, and so we had to be back. We couldn't like wait anywhere. Did I need to be in Sherbrooke? I you don't... had a uh, hair removal appointment at least. Like you were oh doing God. the whole 
who cares? <laughs> I could have canceled. I mean, that it. was. <laughs> That's so stupid. I mean, well, I don't think it was. It was just that you had that, and there was something something else. else. But like, I know with that one at least, it was. You, you were talking about that a lot because, like, oh, you know, you started the, the treatment and then. Uh, you like you stopped for so long and like you could only stop for a certain amount of time oh and you were like God. at the end of that time and we had to get back and that's but you had there were, there was like two or three things that we had to do the next day when we got to Sherbrooke yeah like you had these you know yeah, you had yeah. two or three things to do that's the only that's one I remember hair removal what the hell now I'm like super hairy and proud of it <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong it? with me <laughs> Um, so yeah, what else happened on this trip? I mean, the other thing that I remember well, is we had absolutely no rain, which is crazy. Yeah, it's like we went through the mountains one place and it was like spitting on us. So we stopped and I had the, the rain covers and we covered the backpacks and you know, the, the whole pile of, we had oh my God, 100 pounds so of gear or more that. on the back. <gasps> it was on some tiny little bicycle sized rat trap shelf over the back tire and we had two big backpacking backpacks full of stuff and oh my god that uh, was crazy we had the, the tent was... and we had a duffel bag and we had a couple camping, camping chairs, chairs strapped on there and sleeping pads <laughs> yeah oh yeah i will post a picture of that i still have the picture of us at the farm before we left yeah that was that That's was insane. so much stuff on the back of that motorcycle people were honking at us on the freeway people were paying gas and lunches for us Oh yeah, the first time we stopped up in Oregon. Yeah. We uh, there was a motorcycle like club going through. It was like well, it wasn't club. These people just left the club. Like they all did a big motorcycle ride somewhere and they were going home from it. And so we stopped at a gas station to get gas and went in to get some food at like Jack in the Box or something. Yeah. Uh that wonderful american fast food and they paid for us and so yeah we were there counting the money and like uh, i was just uh, checking receipts from the gas and stuff but we were you know basically doing some money stuff and so they saw us and we're like young with the, they saw us get off the the old beat up motorcycle well it wasn't beat up but old motorcycle with the big pile of stuff and they're like oh these these crazy kids need some help and so they yeah, yeah he yeah, the that wife, happened. I think, gave me a $50 bill and said, go buy some food. Yeah. And bring me the change back. And I'm like, all right. Motorcyclists yeah. are... I learned later that motorcycle, there's, uh, like, motorcycle riders have a, like, it's a, a big sub-community. Like, they all yeah. take care of each other. And I mean, every motorcycle... If you see two motorcycles is... passing... Yeah. Like, no, no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, if you see two motorcycles passing on the road, they'll almost always wave at each other. Exactly. Like, and you could be on like some, you know, big badass like you know American muscle motorcycle, like the, the giant loud Harley Davidson. You see somebody come by on their like old piddly little grandpa's oh, yeah. Honda motorcycle and <laughs> wave to each other. Like, yeah, that, respect. That reminds You're me on a motorcycle. When we went into the Harley Davidson oh, shop. Oh my God! Yeah, Har Harley David. The Harleys are all about Harleys, and they're like Harley is the best thing and the only thing and if you ride, you should be riding a Harley. And you came in with like a Honda. Vet. I pulled in. Yeah. So I had one of my foot pegs fell off. And so I had nowhere to rest my foot for this long drive. And so we were trying to find a new foot peg and we pulled into, uh, I saw a Harley Davidson shop and I'm like, all right, well, they have motorcycles. So I'll go see if they have a foot peg that fits. And so I pulled into the parking lot of the Harley Davidson shop on my little Honda motorcycle wearing my brother-in-law's Honda motorcycle jacket. And I go walking into the Harley Davidson store. Oh my God. And uh, the, the first thing the guy said to me um, was something along the lines of, you got a lot of balls walking in here like that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then we told him what we were doing and he's like, all right, even if you're not on a Harley Davidson, anybody doing that, you're, you're a legit rider. Yeah. And you did not even have anything like protecting you from the wind. Yeah, I took off the screen actually because it was old and like yellowed. He had a windscreen on the front. Yeah, but, but you, it was old. Yeah, but you took it off. I, I didn't. Yeah, I took it off. I mean, it was old. It was yellow. You could, yeah, but I mean, you like could see on the highway, it, but it wasn't great. Like I remember you like yeah. having like neck pain all the time. 
<laughs> yeah, it wasn't a good idea to not have a windscreen. Nope. But also that one was so old, I don't know how well it would have worked. Maybe it would have broken. Well, maybe it would have been a good idea to put a new one on there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it absolutely would have been a good idea to do that. Yeah. But looking now, <laughs> that was that was a mistake. <laughs> Probably, I but I mean, it's literally driving more... 3,000 miles, holding myself forward against like 60 mile an hour winds. Oh my god, that was insane. I don't know how you slept on that. I was sleeping like, all the time. It was so dangerous. Yeah. Like, I mean, at least we had the big backrest for it, but I didn't know you were sleeping. And then you told me, and I'm like, oh my god, you're going <laughs> to fall off and die. And But I didn't. How are you doing that? Like, like number one, how are you? comfortable enough to do that and number two how do you do that without falling off i have no idea i mean i had like a um, back rest thing yeah it was, it was a really high back rest so i was kind of but, like leaning towards it and i would like yeah, grab you but, back and i would just like kind of hold myself straight while i was sleeping <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's it's like when you sleep on a, the top bunk without a rail, you just don't fall off. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that was that was crazy. But then, yeah, in like the middle of the way, we bought um, microphones that would go inside of the helmet, so we could finally speak. And it was like four hundred dollars to buy these Bluetooth. But it was worth it. I remember going through the hills there one time. I, I wish I could remember where, but basically, it was like farmland but in the rolling hills and it was i think it was getting to be later in the day so it was like the sun was starting to set and so it cast a shadow across all the fields but they had recently harvested the the hay and rolled it up in these giant like rolls that were still yeah. sitting out in the field and so they were like these golden hay rolls but the the grass had started to regrow so it was a like totally green field with these golden rolls in it and then the sun had gone behind the mountains enough that it was like casting a shadow over just the field but all the hay bales were still in the sun so they were like glowing out <laughs> in this green field I'm and if I, had sleeping. A, I don't remember that <laughs> you, you might have been sleeping but <laughs> i um i wanted to stop and take a picture but i didn't have a good camera like that was that, that was like a, a Sorry. Calendar picture worthy kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that reminds me of the time that there was like buffaloes. Oh, like, yeah. We were coming out of Yellowstone. Yeah. And they were like and, basically like on the fucking side of the road. I mean, road. they weren't like, they're not, not basically. They were literally on the road. Like the whole yeah. herd of them was just slowly like grazing across the plains. And there was a highway going through the plains. And they, they were just moving along slowly crossing the highway and traffic had to stop because a buffalo would walk across it, yeah you could have we could have reached out and touched it like literally without even trying yeah they were that close and then we wanted to stop to take pictures but then i was like no i'm too scared that the motorcycle won't start again because it happened a few times that it, it could, wouldn't start because yeah well that was mostly up in yellowstone like it was it was uh hard to start because it was just an old engine anyway yeah. and it didn't it wasn't like totally fixed up like it probably should have been for a cross-country road trip yeah but um because it was so old uh, it had a different kind of um carburetor system in yeah. there where it used jets like like physically sized jets to spray the right amount of gas in there but the amount of gas you need changes at different altitudes because you have less air at higher okay. altitudes i didn't know that nope and so we went up to Yellowstone, and then we well, we went up. We tried, tried to. Oh no, we went to Yellowstone. We didn't get up all the way up to the highest part of Yellowstone. Well, well yeah, we but, arrived to like, some point that we just needed to coast back down. Well, th so we were trying to go up to the highest elevation waterfall in Yellowstone, which was at like eleven thousand feet elevation. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to go up there, and the motorcycle would work like. It took it would take me about a half an hour to get it started in the mornings because oh. it was it was well it was difficult but it, once I got it started I just had to keep it revved up like I couldn't let the engine go to idle or it would die yeah and we have I to remember. spend like another half hour starting it again yeah so but 
if it was revved up, it worked totally fine. So we were going to go up to the waterfall. And so we had to go up and up and up this hill. But there was road construction on the hill. And so there was a lot of traffic backed up and it was like stop and go and stop and go. And at one of the stops, I let the engine go down too much and it died and it just would not start again. Yeah, we're too so, high. Way too high. Elevation, not like. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so went back down. So I just turned it around, put it in neutral and yeah. coasted down the mountain. But was it that time that we also like almost ran out of gas? We we never we didn't plan our trip. We just kind of were like, ah, oh, we're gonna we need to go that direction, and so we would just drive that direction. And we generally followed big highways, um, but we didn't like you know plan out. Okay, I get this much gas mileage, and then the next gas station is this far away, so we should be able to make it to this one, or we can skip it and go to the next one. Yeah, we didn't really know where we're going. We're just like going places and like, uh huh. I yeah, I, I put, I, I put. Sherbrooke in my GPS and said yeah. go. <laughs> Basically, and then we're just going around and like, oh, this looks pretty. Let's go this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we were going through the these the mountains, and um, gas was getting low. And I think we skipped one gas station. Like, like we were pretty full when we went by a gas station. I'm like, oh, we we filled up not that long ago. We we'll be fine to the next one. But there was no and next we, one. There was no next one. We were in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like like the actual middle of nowhere. Like you look around and fucking the only nowhere. evidence you can see of civilization was the road we were on. Yep. Like you couldn't see anything on the horizon. And we were in forests and mountains. And we're like, all right, well, I guess this is the time when we run out of gas and have to hitchhike to a <laughs> gas station and then hitchhike back to the bike and hope nobody stole all our stuff. Yep. Um, but uh, then we, it, it's like, it like it just ended. Like we came out of the forest and we were on top of a, a hill on, it was almost on the side of, a, on top of a mountain, almost on the side of a cliff because we had to go switchbacks to go down it. it yeah. Was really, it was a really steep side of the mountain. And then, and then it's like, and it just ended there. And then it was flat and there was a gas station, like, like yeah. kind of like a, a beacon of hope in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing else around it. But we got there and it was like out of service, out of service, out of service. And we're like, what oh my God. actual fuck? It, it's like when we got to Sherbrooke, the, the bike died and I coasted into the gas station yeah. and I had a little bit of momentum and I coasted around the gas pumps and it's like, yeah, out of service, out of service, out of service. Out of, and then one of them was in service. Yep. Um, we took a picture of you not. with the with the pump. With the the pump, showing that I put in more gal more gallons of gas than my gas tank is supposed to be able to hold. So it had absolutely nothing in it. Yep, we're crazy. Uh, was, yeah, and then right <laughs> around the corner there was a city with a whole bunch of gas stations. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, we had gas then. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, the other big thing was we got to Toronto. Oh, yeah. The day before we had to be back in Sherbrooke for your hair removal appointment. Oh, my God. And other important so things. So stupid. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. At least it wasn't the only thing. It's just the only well, thing that we I remember. Don't remember. We don't remember the other things. So for us right now, it is the only thing. And I feel quite disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, we were in Toronto and stopped for gas. And then I think you looked at the tire and you're like, oh, did you no. say something about it? Because the webbing, we could see the, 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 like the cotton strings in the tire. And, and the gas like, was leaking too, I think. Or the oil? Uh, it always had a little oil. Oh, okay. <laughs> a minor oil leak that didn't didn't get fixed. I think that's what killed it in Quebec, like when it was up there through the, the winter. Yeah, okay. So the tire, yeah, the tire was the tire, Yeah, you were like, uh, you know, what's wrong with the tire? And I looked at it and we could see the webbing, which meant all the rubber was gone on one part of it. Yep. And so we needed a new tire, but we were in like this little city like that had nothing and everything was closed of course too it was like six o'clock so all the, sh the shops were closed but and we had uh we had a hotel reservation in toronto that night and it was like 50 
I, I guess it was 50 kilometers at that point because we were in Canada, so everything changed over. Yeah. And so I think we drove 50, we, we drove, well, I think we drove for about an hour on, on this on tire. The fire, yeah. And I was just like, I was going so slow. I was like driving on the side of the road. So I'm like, this is going to blow out at any second. And I'm just going to have to like, like tip the bike over on the side of the road so we don't get run over by the other traffic. <sighs> and um, I remember how stressed I was. Oh, oh my God, that was Almost scary. as stressed as the time we were driving with your whole fucking big trailer in New York City. Uh, that uh, I guess that story will come. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we got to the hotel and then I found a shop and called them the next day. Oh, we were going to go to Canada's Wonderland the next day. Yep. And we, we still managed to do that. We did all, all we um, wanted to do. I found the bike shop. I found a bike shop and they, they actually sent a guy. He drove for like half an hour to go pick up a tire for me because we couldn't wait for things to get shipped. And... Um, while yeah. we were at Canada's Wonderland, they were replacing the tire. Oh, and during? During, yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, I think we dropped the bike off. And how did we get there? And then, I think we took a cab or something. Really? I don't remember that. Well, I, because, I mean, it was, I mean, maybe we just waited at the shop. I don't know. Yeah, I <laughs> All I remember is we got the tire changed and went to Canada Wonders, Canada's Wonderland in the same day. Cool. I don't remember Canada's oh. Wonderland at all. Me neither, not really, but... Oh, yeah, I remember we ate, like, a big, like, ham thing that looked like dinosaur. Thing. Oh, a turkey leg. Turkey leg, yeah. Yeah. I think. Or was it in Disney? I don't know. That uh, could have been. Uh, oh yeah, that was that's a Disney thing. We did that. I, at, I, I, I think I'm like mixing all of my memories, but um. Cool. So we finished the motorcycle trip by stuffing our clothes with more clothes because it was fucking cold. It was the f the only cold night of the entire trip. We didn't bring any cold weather gear because it was summer, right? We were doing this. Yeah, but we got in Quebec, and uh, of course, in Quebec, it was freezing cold. Yeah, and it was middle of freezing July. cold. The one night. We had to drive. Like we couldn't. We couldn't just get a hotel and to drive the next day because we had. No, because I have my hair, hair removal appointment. <laughs> hair removal appointment. <laughs> get oh, rid of those yeah. evil hairs. Oh my gosh. Oh, but it was so cold. Yeah, we stopped and literally got out our bags, and I was stuffing t-shirts down the sleeves because I had a mesh jacket. I was wearing a t-shirt with yeah. literally a mesh jacket over yeah. it. It had armor pads on the elbows and like the back, but other than that, it was just open mesh. And so I stuffed it full of t-shirts. I We put on like three pairs of pants and, and yeah. all, I, I think I was wearing three or four t-shirts and then stuffing all the rest of my clothes down my sleeves. Oh my God. And still we were stopping like every 10 minutes to like, like we would get off the bike and just jump for like five minutes yes. just to warm up. I remember. <laughs> like stand in this dark parking lot because nothing was open because it was the middle of the night jumping so we could get warm <laughs> enough to drive for 10 more minutes. Oh my god, that was terrible. That was the longest drive. Oh, my. I like, was counting down. I'm glad it was kilometers and not miles because you had a little mile sign or well, like a, a distance sign every half kilometer. So I was using that to count down like, okay, I can make it just a few more. Yeah. Well, it took like 13 hours to do Toronto to Sherbrooke, which is crazy long. That's like three times as long as it should. <laughs> Basically. And then what else? New Orleans? Um, I guess New Orleans is the next big one. Yeah. You studied a, a semester abroad in New Orleans. Yeah. Because we couldn't get into Hawaii. Yep. So yeah, we, we put down Hawaii because we're like, oh, we met in Hawaii. Even though it's not the same island, we can go back to Hawaii and, you know, yeah. live in Hawaii for a little bit. Um, but of course we didn't get Hawaii. Yeah. So we got and New Orleans. New Orleans was the only other school that sounded vaguely interesting Yeah. on the whole list. Yeah. I think you put down like, somewhere Tennessee or I no, don't even remember. The, the third one was Colorado. Oh yeah, Colorado's nice. I like Colorado. I mean, I wouldn't say like their schools are any kind of interesting, but I mean, just, it wasn't in New Orleans either. It was Yeah, it turned out. It, yeah, we it was like on the outskirts of New Orleans. It was University of New Orleans. It was so small. So, so gross. Like, 
full of cockroaches and like with yeah, little was... signs that say don't bring a gun to school and i'm like of course i won't i'm canadian <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was that was not an impressive school yeah but we had a good time there we had a good time yeah we, and, uh... um, at corbin oh my god yes it was so fun and then you met that remember the other girl from quebec lived like in the same yeah. apartment complex i still talk to her really yeah what was her name elsa em no. elsa yeah i am still in contact with her wow that's crazy yeah and then so well there's nothing very interesting in i mean being in new orleans it wasn't yeah it wasn't like that interesting. it was an interesting city i mean I was like we didn't do anything crazy all the time because <laughs> you were always going back to california to work Oh yeah, that's when I was I was building that addition on the house, and um, yeah, I didn't finish that job. Like I was the only one building it, and I didn't finish it before we had to leave. And so the deal yeah. was I would come and get you and take you to New Orleans, and then we would be there, like get you settled, and then I had to go back and work on it, and then I could come back. But then you went back New Orleans a second. But time. then I had to go back a second time. Yeah, it was it was just it was a terrible situation. I was. And then, I did not enjoy the, the back and forth. And then when you brought me back to Quebec and then you went back to New Orleans and you were like trying to find a job and it was awful. It was, yeah. Uh, so we had the six month lease on the place, but your semester was only four months. Yeah. So yeah, I drove you up, I dropped you off and then I went back and tried to find a job. If I had have had my tools there, I could have had, I had like two or three people say, we would hire you tomorrow if you had your tools. Yeah. But I didn't have my tools. I had to empty my tools out to pick up. So I took my trailer up to get you and all your stuff and my motorcycle from Quebec yeah. and then drive it down to New Orleans. And so all my tools were in California and me with my empty trailer was in New Orleans. Yeah. And um, so I couldn't find a job doing that. I ended up finding a job as a door to door Ugh. internet salesman. That was terrible. It was horrendous. I hated it. Like every moment of it, I just hated it and hated it. I don't think I really made that like any money on it because it was a hundred percent commission. Oh my God. It was, it was, That's it was a, a terrible. It was like the only thing I could find. Oh my God. Like, right, I tried to, uh, I put in an application cause there was a Papa Murphy's, a take and bake pizza place, like right next to the apartment complex. And so I applied to them to be a delivery driver, which is like, what are the worst jobs you're going to get? And they didn't hire me because my car was too big too like, you know, it wasn't yeah. like a small gas efficient car. So like, I guess they're like, Oh, he's not going to stay doing this. It's going to cost too much to yeah. deliver the pizzas, which I mean, that's to be fair. I wasn't going to stay there that long. It was literally just something to scratch enough rent to survive. Yeah. Um, Damn. So yeah, the, the end of that, that trip was not very good. It was a nice little apartment though. And then I remember one thing about living there is once we were sleeping and in the middle of the night, I wake up hearing voices in the living room and I'm like kind of freaking out. And I'm like, Adam, there's someone inside. And you're like, what? And yes, I hear voices. And you're like, I'm going to go see. And then you, you got to the living room and Netflix just started by itself. Not just Netflix. My computer turned on. I know your computer turned on and started Netflix while we were sleeping. That was insane. Yeah. And it was goosebumps that was playing. <laughs> I was like, seriously, that's really weird. Oh boy. That was, yeah, I forgot about that. Nah, you will never forget about that. That and the cockroach that I killed. Well, Corbin killed. <laughs> Cause you were gone and <laughs> I like, there was really big cockroaches that would get in and I saw one running in the living room and I was like, ah, screaming like murder. And then the neighbor came and was like, are you like being killed right now? Because that's something that happens a lot there. <laughs> and uh, I was like, no, there's just a cockroach. <laughs> and then I just put like a, <laughs> I put like a dictionary on it. So I thought it was da dead, but it wasn't because cockroaches are crazy, like strong and they would never die. So I went. Well, we had a, a big 
soft carpet too also but i went downstairs and i got corbin our friend and i was like can you come and kill the cockroach for me please and he's like yeah sure and then he, he tried to kill it but i mean he tried and tried and tried and it would not die and eventually it died and then later i told that story to a friend and she was like um you need to never do that you need to never kill a cockroach inside your house because you will like let it let her like put all of her eggs everywhere and then you're gonna be stuck with a lot more cockroaches and i was like ew if i had known <laughs> anyway ah. yeah <laughs> okay so now let's talk about the wedding the wedding you don't want to talk about driving to new orleans um uh, is there any good stories I mean, There's... we took my car and my trailer in downtown New York oh City. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's so true. That was the worst moment of my entire life. So, I drove from California to Quebec in four days, I think, to pick you up? Uh, three days. Three days? Okay. And then we road tripped for two weeks down the east coast of the U.S. to go to New Orleans. Yeah, you have and, a huge car with a mattress in the back so we could sleep in it and the yeah, huge it was a, closed trailer. Chevy Tahoe. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a, a Chevy Tahoe. And I could fit a, uh, a queen size mattress in the back. Like, just throw a mattress in there and it fit. And then I had my um, cargo trailer on the back that I had my motorcycle in and all of your stuff was piled up in there. And we dumbasses drove through New York City with that shit. Well, we were driving down the East Coast. We're like, we want to see some stuff. Like, we stopped at some parks and, you know, oh we saw, we did some cool stuff there. Um, but we're like, hey, let's go to New York. Let's see, like, the the Empire State Building and let's go see well, uh, we the Statue not, of Liberty. We did not see anything. I mean, we saw the Empire State Building, but we were, like, literally at the bottom of it. So we, and there was nowhere to stop. So we didn't, like, look at it or go we up just there. just drove or next to it because like, we oh, couldn't yes. park I it. I saw the there. bricks. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I saw the bricks at the bottom of the the Empire State Building. Yeah, that sounds and then, fun. And then we took a ferry and we're like, oh, that little that little thing way off in the distance, that's the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, well, at that and point, we, we were able $90. to $90. Oh, yeah, yeah, I found that um, you couldn't put it in any, any, like, we couldn't park it on the street because, well, there's, like, no street parking or you can't leave it there for very long. I couldn't put it in any of the garages because it was too tall, wouldn't fit inside. Oh, we had a a carrier, a cargo carrier on top of the car also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I did find this one open air lot. It was a valet lot so that you weren't even allowed to park it. But they said that they would take my car and trailer and we had to pay for two spots and it was valet. And it ended up costing $90 to park for like an hour <laughs> in New and, York City. Oh, and I had to park it anyway. Like they tried to take it in there and they couldn't park they couldn't drive the trailer so i had to go in there anyway and park my own car in the valet lot and pay the valet yeah. price <laughs> and it was not worth it i mean <laughs> it was just no. troubles for nothing totally not worth it yeah and it was so stressful to drive around new york city with all of that oh. seriously i've never been that stressed in my whole goddamn life so there are three things i remember about driving in New York City. First was like when we first got into downtown, this is like the first thing that happened in New York City. We were on a, a two lane road. So it was like, you know, it was a city street. There were two lanes going each direction. And so we got to the stoplight in a two lane road and there were five cars lined up. Oh my God. Packed yes. into a two lane road. And then on a red light, the guy in the right lane decided he wanted to turn left and so he yeah, just went i know oh my god i was so stressed and then i almost ran over a lady because she decided she to cross like, the street whenever the fuck she wanted well it's like it's well this is what they do in new york they stand like right at they, they like put their toes right next to your tires as you're driving so they can like save like a tenth of a second walking across the street yeah but she didn't just do that she like charged out from between parked cars into the side i was already driving past her so i like she didn't even step in front of me she stepped up against the side of me but i have my trailer and the the tires on my trailer are a little bit wider than the tires on my car and so she like walked right up 
and almost yeah. got run over by the my trailer. And then Fun as time. we were leaving, uh, I pushed around a New York taxi cab driver and he got really angry. Well, do you remember because... when we tried to go in the tunnel? Oh yeah, the best way and to leave New York like... City was to get in the tunnel, but well, I had this trailer. And it was almost the only way. I mean, it was very difficult after that to find another way like to get out. Three three hours, I think, to go out of our way to get around. Yeah. Find another way out of New York. Because But, you yeah, can't you can't they wouldn't let us the tunnel after the night the the eleven nine eleven because a trailer in a tunnel after nine eleven doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Right? All right, we might have a bomb in there. But you can't like, have a bomb to look? in your car usually. Yeah. Like a bomb is in like six by eight. <laughs> yeah, the, like the cops were literally, they had a roadblock and they were just, they were stopping people who were trying to go in the tunnel and they're like, yeah, don't like you, you can't go in the tunnel because of 9-11. Because of 9-11, we don't accept trailers and tunnels anymore. I mean, because- And it was what, like eight years plane later? plane flew into a building, trailers can go underground. Like just, it doesn't make sense, yeah. people. Anyway. So I remember that too. And then, well, that trip was nice. Oh, and then I, I left, well, n kind of, because I left my ATM card at the valet lot. And we uh, figured it out when we stopped to get gas just outside of New York. So we finally got out of New York, like three extra hours driving around New York to get out of there. And then we realized I left my ATM card at the valet lot. So I call the valet lot and they're like, oh, yeah, it's right here. We already cut it in half. Oh and my so God. I, like, I couldn't even go back to get it. And we're, this is like in the first few days of our trip. Yep. Like day two or three probably. And we had two weeks two, of I this. Think. Yep. And I had all my money in my bank account. I mean, I had a credit card, so we were able to use that. And I just had to like get in there and pay it off all the time or something. I also had money. Uh, but like, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have easy access to my money until like a while after we got to New Orleans. Yeah. That yeah. Was... I think I'm, I probably paid for most of the trip and then. Yeah, uh, I remember we, we sat down and made a, a spreadsheet to figure out. Yeah. To track all the, the yeah. stuff paying one way and the other to, yeah, we to all do the bookkeeping. That. Yeah. Yeah. And then... The only other thing I remember about that trip was we drove out to Key West in Florida, yeah. again, with my trailer. Yeah. And we took that a nap under a palm tree. I mean, we woke up at like 4 a.m. or something like that, and we drove the keys during oh sunrise. The reason we, that was cool, doing it during sunrise. But the reason we had to do that, remember, because we parked in Home Depot to sleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was florida in the summer it was hot goddamn hot and so we opened the windows and there were mosquitoes because it's a swamp so we had to close the windows and then i we turned on the fan just to get air moving so we wouldn't die inside the car yeah and then the battery died of course and so it's like 4 a.m i wake up it's 4 a.m battery's dead we can't sleep because there's no air movement we can't open the windows because of the mosquitoes so we're like like fine all right I got to figure out how to start my car and then we may as well drive out there. So we ended up buying some crappy jumper cables at a gas station. And then the, uh, the mate or the, the cleaning people were just arriving to home Depot. And so one of them was able to give us a jump start. Yep. And then also, you know, it was just jump started, So you got to let it run for a while so it can charge the battery up again. So we're like, may as well go drive the keys. because we wanted to go out to key West anyway. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was like, So we Four went five in the morning. We during, drove the yeah, keys. sunrise. It was so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a and really nice, really nice time. And then we get there and we go out to the beach and we're so tired because we didn't sleep well. We didn't sleep much. And we slept for like, what, three hours under a palm tree? Oh my God, it felt so good. It was, it was great. Yeah. <sighs> that, was, that was one of the best naps I've ever had. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And then, yeah, we lived in New Orleans. Well, I lived in New Orleans for a while and you were there a little bit. And so then, and off and then I... I mean, that's pretty much it for that trip. I had a friend that was in Texas and it, when we drove back to Quebec, he came with us. Oh, Dom. And yeah, and we listened him. to Taylor Swift <laughs> the whole fucking time. 
Right, that's because I had a Taylor Swift CD in my CD player, and I never. I wonder why. To I change wonder it. who bought it. <laughs> oh no! Right, you did that. That was your fault. Of course, it was. That CD was in there. Um. Well, for the first year that Snow and I were together, even. You still have it. I think so, I still have it. <gasps> what? It's my CD. It was my car's CD. Let's be I honest. I want it back. It never left that car. <gasps> I want it back. It might, it might still be in there. I'll have to see. Oh, God. Send it by mail, please. Okay. Um, okay, the wedding now. <laughs> <laughs> the weddings. So, uh, let's see. We were going to... Uh, how to best start this. <laughs> you were going to come... I don't know. Okay, we were getting serious. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we're going to... We're together. And... But we're from different countries, and that's a pain in the ass to, you know, go back and forth. You know, you got visas, you can only come so much time. So we're like, all right, well, let's start off by getting you your American citizenship. Yeah. So you can come and live here and work here. And then we can work on getting me my Canadian citizenship later. And um, we even hired lawyers, and we were, like, working through the process here. But uh, we decided easiest way to do it would be to get married that's like that's one of the the easiest ways you can fast track yourself unless you're like a refugee or something yeah and even then it was a long process yeah like 10 but years. um no it was five years mm, i think five years cool. at the minimum like if you did everything on time and didn't have any problems it was five years yeah uh, you could get like your green card or like a residency permit or something before then but to go yeah, out, yeah. all the way to citizenship like it was it was a long time. So we decided, yeah, we can get married and that'd be the easiest way to do it. So you came to California. Um, I don't think it was necessarily for getting married or anything, but we were working on doing the citizenship. And then my friend was going to go down to Las Vegas for a Magic the Gathering card tournament. But we decided we would get married before I arrived in California because I bought my dress. Oh, right. Yeah, we did. We, I bought my dress before I came. That's right. Okay, so you did. That was, you did come out to get married and also to work on the <laughs> citizenship. I yeah, remember. because I remember also like they always stuck me at the border because they were like, "We know you have a boyfriend in the U.S. and la 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 la." Will you leave? And I was like, "Yes, I will leave. Here's a proof." <laughs> and I would not leave, but <laughs> um, I would get married instead. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's crazy. They knew. They knew about me. They had. Like, they knew everything. I was like flagged on your file. Yeah, that was crazy. They were like, "So, what is the purpose of your travel?" And I was like, "I'm gonna go visit my boyfriend." And they're like, "Adam." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, they know everything." Yeah, I mean, this is the U.S. Border Patrol. It was insane. And they're like interrogating you, and then, and then going to Canada. Like when I go up there to visit you, I'm like, I'm gonna go visit my girlfriend. Like, oh, welcome to Canada. Yeah, that's the only like. Every time I go, I I know I'm a citizen, but every time I come back to Canada, they don't ask any questions, and they're just like, welcome back. We're so happy to have you. Like basically, <laughs> like. <laughs> oh my God, we're too. No, it's a super, a super. Uh, 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 what's the word I want? Stereotype. But yeah. Canadians really are very nice. They are mostly, not I all. Mean, of them. There's assholes everywhere, but like, on the whole, Canadians are very nice people. I guess. But yeah, we went to Vegas and we got married. Yeah. So yeah, we we're gonna go to Vegas. He was gonna go down for the trip, and so I was gonna go with him. And I was like, oh, why don't you come along too? And uh, and then we're like, you know what? We're going to Vegas. Let's do the cliche thing and get married. Yeah. So we did. We had and your parents, um, came. my friend's friend. Yeah, oh, yeah, they came. Yeah, uh, but we had. Do you remember Tony, Nick's no. friend? He so his friend came along for the uh, to go to the tournament also. So it was Nick and his wife, and then his friend Tony. Oh yeah, because you guys were going to a geeky weird thing. Yeah, it was a, a card game, like yeah, a collectible card game tournament, Magic the yeah. Gathering. Um. But I just we we met Tony when we picked when we went to Nick. so we met Nick in California. Uh, he lived somewhere else, so we drove to his place and then we all went together to Vegas. And um, we met Tony when we went down there to Nick, to meet up with Nick. 
Yeah. And then he was a, a witness at, at our wedding. <laughs> oh my god. And like, I mean, we went to fucking Vegas to get married and we didn't even get married by Elvis. Like, we're stupid. No, we went to the courthouse. Well, hell, we looked into it. It was like, what, $2,000 or something ridiculous? Yeah, it was pretty expensive. We, we were like, oh yeah, we could do one of those stupid themed weddings, but like, no, they were way, way expensive. Yeah. So were, we just went to the courthouse yeah. and signed the papers. Exactly. And then, and then we were allowed to sleep in the same bedroom as well at your parents' place. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you remember the midgets story from... Oh God. But naked midgets! So yeah, we're walking down the strip and there's the, the people pushing flyers for the strip clubs everywhere. And so it's, it's you and me, Nick and Liz, Tony and my parents all walking in a group. And we cross the street and on the other side of the street, there's a guy on the corner pushing a strip club and he sees us and somebody looked at him. I don't know who did it, but one of us looked at him. Probably me. Yeah, because yeah, you're a friendly Canadian. You don't avoid eye contact. Exactly. And so he's like, oh, somebody looked at me. He like zeroed in on us, like beelined. Like he met us in the street while we were still crossing the street, like flyers out, pushing them into our hands, being like, oh, you want to go, go to a strip club? I don't remember what he's saying, but like blah, 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 strip club this, strip club this. And then we just kind of like parted around him. Ignored him. Ignored him. And then as we're like walking around him, leaving, he yells to the backs of us, we got midgets, butt naked midgets, think about it. <laughs> I know, I will never forget that moment. My dad still tells that story. My dad wrote a poem about that story. I know, I know, I heard it. Oh, I love you, dad, and your mom. Anyway, I'll come visit whenever this shitty pandemic stops. Yeah, it's gonna stop in the rest of the world before it stops here. Probably. We're going to be like this festering sore on the planet. Oh, my gosh. So it might yeah. be a while before yeah. well, anybody a wants to come years. here again. <laughs> a couple years. Yeah. So after the wedding, we just stayed together for like a, a year. And then I came back to California. And then the end of the story, I don't know if, <laughs> if we want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> up to you <laughs> I mean I don't know <laughs> it didn't end up very well right no it was it was rough yeah it was pretty shitty sorry about everything <laughs> anyway c'est la vie yeah but I do remember one thing that still makes me cry every time <laughs> is the letter you wrote to me before I left for Asia. Yeah, because I knew we were, yeah, we were, we were basically broken up by then. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were like together, but like, we knew that like, you were leaving for Asia. That was it. We were done. Um, and yeah, I wrote you a letter. I don't remember what i wrote in the letter oh it was in french yeah you wrote you wrote it in french and then you translated it in english because you were scared that i wouldn't understand your french yeah my french is not very good it was good enough it was the cutest thing i've ever received in my whole life and every time i read it i cry oh you still have it i do of course i do oh yeah I, I remember I opened it because you you hide it you hid it hid it I'm bad yeah. with my past tense um, I hit you hid it in my backpack and I was in I wrote it I sorry I wrote it while you were like packing like I would help you get ready to pack up and go I wrote it the day you left like I'd been thinking about it but I didn't I couldn't ever get away enough to write it so I would like I would sneak away and spend a couple of minutes writing something and then come back and help you. And then like, Oh, I got to go take this in the back. And then I'd go take it back there and then write a little bit more and then come back and help you. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I hit it. I, I had it in my pocket and I didn't, I think it was at the airport. I finally got a chance to hide it in your bag or somewhere. I don't know, but it was like in my small carry on backpack that I took with me on the plane and I sat and I was very, very sensitive because it was really difficult for me to say goodbye. And 
I was like on the edge of crying and I was like thinking, what am I doing? Like, why am I going to fucking China? It doesn't make sense. I don't know what I'm doing. And I was like kind of feeling weird and lost. And I opened my backpack to like take a book or something to change my mind. And then I saw an envelope that I didn't put there. So I was like, what the fuck is that? And I opened it and I immediately started crying, but like crying so loud. Everybody in the goddamn plane was looking at me thinking, (laughs) why is she going to China if it makes her so sad? (laughs) So, oh my God. Yeah. And then I kept it the whole trip and I still have it. Impressive. Yeah, because you did a lot on that trip. I did a lot. I was in Asia for seven months. And the letter survived. It did. I would never have let it go. It's like really the most beautiful thing that I've ever received. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. It was good times. Yeah, it was it was good. <laughs> I don't regret any of it. Me neither. And now I can tell people that I've been married. Yeah, me too. I have to click divorced on the <laughs> Oh my god, do you stuff now? We have to. I, I don't it's... do that. I, I I go on single. I mean I it doesn't I guess it doesn't really matter, but you know, demographic information I guess. Oh that's but like so funny. It's, I mean, I think it's more because it was, it happened here in the States. So like you could pretend yeah. like it didn't happen up there, yeah. but like for me, like it's on record. Like yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. all linked together. Yeah. I just did not think about that, but yeah, <laughs> you kind of yeah. have to check the divorce boxes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. But then you met your girlf- girlfriend, like a couple months after I left. Partner. 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 Sorry. She likes partner. Okay, partner. Sorry. Um, so you've been together for uh, like well, a few years? I knew. I, I already knew her. We've been together four years. Yeah. Congrats. Well, it's longer thanks. than we did. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been an adventure. Yeah. It's, um, well, you, you might remember I am not built the best for relationships. I do remember, and I think that's pretty much why we're not together anymore. <laughs> yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, life happens. Yeah. But um, yeah, I already knew her, and then um, I was a uh, like I was a I was a wreck for like three months after you left. I know. Like I don't know I don't know if I ever told you that, but like I was. I never reach out to people. I never like need to talk to people. And I was like needing to talk to people all the time. I just had to talk to people, which I guess for most people is like, yeah, that's a normal thing. But for me, it's like the first time that has ever happened that I felt like so bad that I needed to just talk to people. Yeah. So um, I, I know everybody else is probably like, oh, poor you. You had to talk to people. We do that all the time. But no, for you, it's a big thing. That's like, for me, it was like literally the first time in my life I ever felt the need to do that. I'm so sorry. And... I you want to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> I'm such a bad influence. <laughs> but no, I sent her a message. Um, and then we met up and then we started dating. And yeah, we're still dating. Well, that's good. Um, I'm happy. We went back and, and read the message like uh, it was maybe two years later and we vowed to never read that message again because it was so bad it was just so cheesy the message i sent to her really yeah so like oh my god i want to know you never told me that so i i I already knew her we met we had met at uh friends games nights like seven years before that i think seven or eight years before um we got together yeah her and i got together um and like back then i had a crush on her like pretty big and um but nothing ever happened i mean she wasn't living here and i only saw her infrequently and i didn't think she was interested and thought she was like out of my league and all that and um 
then at one point things kind of like we, we went out on hung out a couple times maybe date maybe not like who knows what like things might have started happening and then our shitty friends were like you guys can't be together anymore you can't you can't hang out anymore blah 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 yeah and so they basically drove us apart yeah for seven years and then yeah when i was in the well i was coming out of feeling bad like i was getting over like the the break the terrible feelings the i guess yeah the breakup which apparently three months is fast to get over i mean something like that but i don't know i don't know everybody lives it differently i guess yeah so but anyway i was getting out coming out of it and i saw um i like never look at facebook but i she happened to be like on the top of the feed on facebook i'm like oh i should message her and you know i just wanted yeah. to i just like, want to know what the message is like hang out again yeah what did you say um, I, i don't remember what i said but it was something like like oh hey snow it's been ages are you doing like just something so blah and cheesy and just like you know it was <laughs> it was bad oh um hang on are you gonna find me see. <laughs> i can try I'll, i'll try a little bit but it's that must be very far four away. years ago yeah. yeah it's four, four years and we well she actually didn't do she doesn't do that much on facebook Ooh. Hmm. yeah that's pretty bleh. oh you found it yeah okay read it uh, i'm sorry snow i have to do this <laughs> okay it says snow with three exclamation points you popped up on my news feed that i never look at ha ha oh. <laughs> with one exclamation point what's with, what's up with you how's life oh that's sweet it, it's not but, that bad it's not that it was bad but it's just like so bleh. it's and not then, that bad we well it probably seems worse because we both had like this memory of this magical message like bringing us back together oh right <laughs> Okay, now I understand. <laughs> I'm going to read it and we're like, "Really? That? That's not magical." But that's okay. But, like we started dating after that? <laughs> no, it was like <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. It's life. Oh well. Well, at least now I've met, I mean, you found each other and you're happy and that's what matters. Yeah. That's a good way to finish so, the episode. <laughs> so, thanks for coming Adam and telling my people about our story um hopefully everything goes well for you in the future and uh, i'll see you guys next week bye bye